If you have 55,000 gold sitting around or 1 million free experience or millions upon millions of credits or even 50,000 bonds and you would like to get rid of them, then this is your chance because, ladies and gentlemen, Leon is here as our newest assembly shop event release tank. Um, this is the second ever assembly shop vehicle. As we remember, the first one was Object 780 and also, as we remember, one of the worst things about 780's release was that nobody knew what 780 is how it plays nobody was able to test it out there was no gameplay action nothing basically it was behind the hidden curtain until it was released this was absolutely crazy that you release an event which is FOMO fear of missing out in the first place you know and you also release a vehicle what nobody knows about on the top of that this was just mind blown so this time we still have to FOMO guys because there are going to be special styles, special numbers uh, listed on the vehicles. Uh, what uh, you really shouldn't care too much about because at the end of the day, who cares about that, right? Because there are 65,000 Leons going to be on uh, EU server and 15,000 Leons on the NA server, for example. On EU, 22,000 with numbers and on NA, 5,000 with numbers, if I'm not mistaken. So don't uh, don't uh, fear like uh, you have to get this vehicle no matter what, honestly speaking. But this time, it uh, seems like they listened about the testing of the vehicle part at least. Because uh, as you can see, I'm able to show you some gameplay action featuring Leon. And um, this is going to be our newest uh, assembly shop vehicle. Ladies and gentlemen, a child of Progetto 65 and Leopard 1, I think. This is the best way how we can describe it. Now, before we are going to talk about this vehicle itself, let's actually look at the prices because it is more expensive than 780, for example. So this is the article and all the information, 65,000 tanks in total on EU server and the first around 22,000 uh, they say over here has a marked uh, 3D style, you can see the marker is back over there and on the gun barrel just like on 780, so this is the style you uh, are getting as well if you wake up early, uh, right, and uh, here are all the resources, exactly like last year, but it is more expensive because the free experience gold, uh, blueprint, spawns and credits right uh, last year we had 8000 uh, free experience for 1% on 780 uh, gold value was exactly the same 550 for 1% we had 1 million credits uh, for 1% so if you actually want to get this vehicle only with credits right it is going to be 125 million Credits for you, sorry. This is 10%. This is 100%, ladies and gentlemen. 125 million credits in total, or 50,000 bonds, which is once again 100 bonds more expensive than on 780. If you like getting milked, you are going to get milked more this time. The only thing that has the same is, I think think gold and also fragments if i'm not mistaken i might be wrong with the fragments uh, but i definitely know that you are able to use exactly the same amount of fragments in total to boost uh, yeah 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 to get the progression uh, to 36 percent last year we were able to do the same as well so this is how expensive this tank is going to be for you overall if you decide to go for it once again and uh, anything else interesting over here no so now after we know how everything Everything works and how expensive it is going to be most likely uh, let's talk about the tank itself it is a tier 10 Italian medium tank with the special vehicle category which actually makes you bonds as well and it also uh, you can also transfer crew members into this vehicle without any penalty so you can use your Progetto 65 crew members for example in this vehicle without any penalty whatsoever and you can simply jump into the battlefield you know you do not have to retrain your crew members it has an auto reloading gun with 420 alpha, which is very juicy, you know, to get auto reloader plus 420 alpha. This is quite a bit more than on Progetto. Progetto's alpha damage is six, uh, sorry, <laughs> 360. And um, yeah, it equals quite a bit uh, bigger punches and uh, better trading tank, right? But uh, the biggest difference between this tank and the Progetto 65, for example, or this tank compared to the 
any other auto reloading tank in the game is the reload times inside the auto reloading mechanic because it is not reverse auto lead, uh, reloader like IS3A, it is not the standard auto reloading gun like Progetto 65, it is something exactly in the middle because the fastest reloading shell is when you have one shell in your magazine and you are cycling the second round. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the second round loads the fastest inside Leon. So take a look at this. This is the Leon in the garage with my setup, with my equipment units right over here. And pay attention on the reload times. By the way, you can make the reload times a bit better. But as you can see, I'm using the aiming mechanism tuning modification just to test it out. But you can make the reload time a bit better if you go for this, for example. Uh, but... Uh, with uh, this setup, uh, look at reload times. If your magazine is completely empty, your uh, first shell loads 18.6 seconds. So, as you can see, quite a big penalty if you decide to fully empty your magazine. But, of course, if it saves your life, if it saves uh, some of your teammates' life, and if you simply have a chance to take out a tank, bloody hell, shoot it, bloody hell, empty your clip and move on with your life, right? But if you have one shell in the magazine, the fastest loading shell in this entire tank is the second shell. 7.1 seconds in this case. You can uh, get it uh, like 6.6 .6 seconds or 6.7 seconds if you use the different uh, field mode, for example, with this setup. The third shell loads 8.9 seconds, and when you have three shells in the magazine, once again, you load uh, longer, 11.5 seconds. So, in this case, two middle shells are the shells you would like to cycle, depending on the situation, but if you want to get the fastest reload, you cycle the second shell, 7.1 seconds, 8.9 seconds, 11.5 five second reload times right over there. Full clip reload 46.12 seconds and it has quite a long reload time between shots guys. 4.5 seconds and four shells in the magazine in total as you can see. So definitely something uh, uh, we have not seen before, a different auto reloading mechanic and uh, something to get used to actually. It took uh, like a couple battles, uh, two, three battles uh, to actually get used to this and uh, to uh, nail this, uh, you know, the second shell reloading mechanism over there because it is useful in many, many situations. You can pop two first sh uh, shots, right? Uh, 420 per pop and then you can start cycling the third one which is quite unique it has minus 9 degrees of compression, which is very nice uh, aiming time 2.21 seconds accuracy when boosted to the max guys 0.24 well not to the absolute max because there is the improved ventilation of course there is the aiming directive as well but you know boosted a lot, let's put it that way. And TPM 3,551. Um, you can get a TPM close to uh, 3,700 as well if you go for the reload time build, for example. Uh, so, yeah, gun is quite unique. And uh, looking at this accuracy, looking at the saving time, I can say that sometimes it turps uh, more than you would expect, honestly. I have quite some turpy... I have had quite some turpy moments in this uh, where I have made like three first shots and cycling uh, the uh, the second shell and miss that as well or simply bounce the simply not hitting where I'm aiming sometimes it is trolley and you can feel this aiming time as well on the battlefield it is definitely not um, the fastest aiming tank but you know you have to balance it somehow that 420 alpha and uh, you know decent accuracy right or very good accuracy okay let's be fair over here survivability is definitely something you have to look out for because it is not the best 1850 hit points 70 30 25 hull armor 180 70 and 50 turret armor and uh, if we quickly look at the 3d armor model as well versus the same 258 millimeters of penetration ap round it is full uh, green right over here uh, turret can be bouncy if you are looking directly towards your enemies uh, versus lower tier tanks because you know they need uh, quite uh, some penetration to go through your gun mantlet but over there on the lower side you can see penetration sites are ricochet but if you angle even slightly boom they can go through you uh, very easily 
and if you would load in uh, let's say 323 millimeters of penetration you can go through the commander uh, not commander sorry uh, through the gun mantle as well very easily so armor wise definitely this tank is not impressive but i have seen some bounces even with that armor uh, some turret bounces some very lucky bounces mobility now it has um, how to say like i would say okay mobility um, especially with my field mode setup. Uh, 60 top speed, 17 moving backwards. I was able to get it up to 17 only thanks to this turbocharger tuning modification, uh, which lowered my camo a bit because this thing has very nice camo. Uh, without that field mode, for example, you can actually use, you can actually not pick this field mode as well. Your camo would be 32% while stationary. So definitely this tank has some camo. But the mobility didn't feel very, uh, very nimble, um, I think is the best way to put it. Uh, like the top speed, when you get up to 60 kph, it's nice, you know, thumbs up for that. But the reverse speed, 15 stock, definitely you can feel that. And uh, uh, I could use some more, but you know, it is, it is decent. It is, it is okay. Uh, view range, seven, uh, sorry, 471 meters uh, with this setup right over here without coated optics. The stock view range on this tank is 400 meters. So those were all the boring details about uh, Leon, all the characteristics. How does it play? What do you think about that? Do I like it? Do I hate it? I have to say I uh, really did like uh, this vehicle. Um, I do like Progetto 65 as well. And I would say overall, if you do not know if you are going to like this tank or not, ask yourself this. Do you like Progetto 65? If you answer yes to that question, you most likely are going to like this tank as well. It is like a mixture between Leopard 1 and Progetto 65. Uh, you know, how it looks like and everything else. As I said before, uh, but it just has that unique advantage with the reload times because if you think about that it is actually quite an advantage to not having to cycle only the first shell all the time you can just deal 840 damage and then cycle uh, the um, other shell or uh, you can deal uh, four sorry three times 420 alpha shots uh, after nine seconds and uh, then cycle the third one you have just so much more room to maneuver uh, basically with this type of uh, reloading mechanic and also it makes you a scarier opponent for your enemies as well because versus Progetto for example if you see Progetto let's say 65 uh, firing two shells at someone else you are you know counting the shell firing third one as well and now you know that Progetto 65 only has one shell left and you can easily charge in because if that Progetto sh shoots you right that guy is going to be loading forever and ever and only has one shell left but uh, in this situation you see Leon taking two shots taking third one as well and now you're thinking should I go in or what's going on because Leon has seven second reload now after firing two shells or actually three shells has seven second reload now like what should I do what is the best play over here right it gives just so, so many more thoughts uh, to the enemies as well and uh, not simply rushing you down after you have taken one or two shots and uh, just another thing to think about another angle to think about when playing with this and uh, also another feature what you saw over here intuition usually intuition on autoloaders is quite bad to use overall because you have uh, only the first shell which loads the fastest uh, using the intuition and all the other shells load long, uh, longer once again but in this case you get intuition value to the maximum because uh, you lower the reload time with your intuition like I did over here uh, on the longest reloading shell and now you start loading in the fastest shell once again because I loaded in APCR in this situation uh, we are a lot uh, we are behind a lot in this game with HP and I saw type 5 is coming in and uh, 250 260 millimeters of penetration versus type 5 is simply not going through and um, overall I would say the AP round I am not very impressed I'm not impressed about the shell velocity I'm not impressed about the penetration and I see this tank uh, being used uh, with APCR a lot so I see uh, players who pick it up are going to use APCR a lot in this tank <clears throat> for sure 
And I came back to this position just uh, to counter uh, in this ma match, for example, just to counter the Kunze to outspot that guy, hopefully, to deal with Type 5 and all the other guys. And sadly, Kunze was able to put one shot into me, and uh, that makes me a one shot. So, very close. This was a tier 8 battle, by the way, but it was an interesting tier 8 battle to feature over here because it showed you a couple. Uh, uh, different angles uh, me uh, using the reloading versus those tank destroyers just you know a couple minutes ago Rhine metal and d28 and also uh, the uh, intuition perk over here the accuracy sniping everything is basically going to be over here very close battle as well very rare in world of tanks i think i should show every single close battle because this is almost like finding a uh, gold mine right now, how I played this tank myself while I was testing it out, I was uh, using it like a support tank, uh, especially in the first battles. Well, it depends uh, so much about the situation, about the matchmaking as well. You can start off as a support tank and then if the opportunity shows itself, you can be the attacker, you can be the... Uh, the uh, destroyer as well because uh, you have the damage output in 4.5 seconds you can deal 840 damage it is especially scary in this type of situation like in 4.5 seconds or let's uh, round it up in 5 seconds I was able to take out the 832 like very big firepower right and I still have 840 damage in my clip and uh, I loaded uh, another shell super fast. Here is one, two, one for 122 TM coming in. And they already had three shells ready for that vehicle. So I could have easily taken this guy out. But I didn't want to charge him down. Because number one, defender can one-shot me. And number two, 122 can also one-shot me. So I am actually pulling back. Uh, hoping to deal with that defender first. And also hoping to get under a bit better angle versus 122 TM. Because if that guy comes in and spots me while I'm up over there, Defender can easily take me out, so this is why I was playing over there like that and uh, what I was trying to do. And by the way, check this out guys, I'm actually typing in the chat while 122 DM comes in and actually bounces me. What a perfect timing for that guy to come in while I'm typing. Luckily was not able to see my hull, which would have been easy penetration and simply hit my gun mantlet. You know, you need a bit more penetration than the standard penetration on 120 to TM for that so quite lucky over there while I was trying to type to T103 that uh, you have to go in you have to take the first shot because you have more HP right uh, but guys don't worry my luck is not going to uh, be unpunished because um, while typing and bouncing you know artillery simply does not allow it and pass that to me nicely done was aiming at exactly the perfect position where he needed to aim and GG. Cost me my Radley Walters, but still, together with one of the blind shots in the middle of the game, uh, that was like 7,600 combined, 7,700 combined battle with 6.1k damage. It was plus two matchmaking, but still very interesting. Long battle, you can see 13 minute battle. You can feel like four regular battles into this. Or maybe even five, six, seven battles on Ensk map, because Ensk map, Ensk map is quite stupid. Uh, three minute battle is a long battle for Ensk, right? Now, in this battle, I just want to show you this example, uh, and this overall covers the autoloaders as well. Like, people are uh, uh, asking when should you empty your clip, when sh uh, should you load your shots and whatnot. Of course, always try to maximize your damage, always try to, you know, wait for another shell reload. But if you have the shot, and especially if you have to take the snapshot, don't worry about that too much. Like over here, I had 0 0.9 seconds left on my reload, but I just took the shot and second example if i would have waited another 0 0.7 seconds dnh would have been able to shoot me over here 100 percent right and 140 140 is getting banged but i was not sure is that guy getting banged enough and i actually emptied my entire clip to take this guy out right there right now and uh, especially it was easy to do for me or easy decision for me because i'm up the hill i'm not going to peak anytime longer anyway because now they are super aware of me and uh, always looking at me and whatnot and i knew that i have time to fully load my clip up on the hill once more right so yeah 
you know, don't overthink it too much, but of course, pay attention on the reload time. If you have like 0.1 seconds left, uh, just wait for that 0.1 seconds. But uh, I interrupted my reload and I just wanted to show you this example simply for the reason that sometimes you do not need to care about that, especially if they are looking at you. In both cases, Eskong and DNH were looking at me and they interrupted my reload with under one second left for that. Because it's always better to save your HP than get the extra shell in the magazine. <laughs> Super simple. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is Leon with 420 alpha. By the way, look at rolls, 388, 396, and uh, 353. Nice rolls. But uh, this is Leon, our newest assembly shop vehicle. Coming over here in a couple days, now we know the prices, now we know how this vehicle uh, works, handles. What do you think about that? Are you going for it? If nothing changes with the event, with the prices, as I said, and they may, there, there may be some tuning there, there may uh, be some, you know, tweakings with the price, with uh, the release date and whatnot. But um, what do you think about that? Are you going for it? Yes, no? Hopefully today's video helped you out a bit, making your decision a bit easier, whether you are going for it or not. If it was, my job is done over here. I thank you so much for your time and for tuning in. I got you next time with something else. Stay awesome, stay beautiful, stay sexy, take care and bye.